Hello there, Scorpios. Welcome to your tarot reading. So I'm going to relay four messages for you that came out while I was shuffling the cards. And then we're going to pull out the spread for this month, okay? First message here. It feels to me as if a lot of you are um, at a point where you are newly single, you have been divorced, and you're trying to move on with your life in the romantic front. And you're trying to figure out, you know, ways in which you can create that stability where you can invite another person into your life so that you can share, you know, a very profound, a very emotionally fulfilling, rewarding, satisfying relationship with another person. You're so you're you're out there possibly dating. Um, you know, you you might have somebody in mind and you're you're trying to express yourself and make yourself a little bit more vulnerable so that you can attract and, you know, invite a new person to to you know date or to take things to the next level and to be exclusive with you so i feel like relationship building especially for this month is really high on the agenda and it's also going to be a lot uh, where you are devoting a lot of your energy okay um others of you i'm sensing there's a lot of planning here for a partner so if you are coupled up, I feel like, you know, home improvement, um, changes within the home, fixing things up, clearing things up, cleaning things up within the home environment so that you can make yourself ready and prepared to take a relationship to the next level or bring another person into the fold. Um, the, I guess this, that both of those messages tie in together. In the work sector, so this is going to be pretty much the second message then, excuse me. In the work sector, um, I'm feeling like there's a little bit of a lull, like a little bit of a hiatus where things are, are, are slowing down at work. You're not bombarded with a lot of uh, responsibility. So there's a little bit of a slowdown. Um, if you are working on the commission basis as well, on a client commission basis, it might also represent a time where commission payments, royalty fees, um, overall that might, there might be a little bit of a slowdown in your financial uh, circumstance. Okay. It's not severe, but I feel like it's a little bit of a slowdown and it will resume in the August timeframe. I'm also feeling some of you in the work environment are just like antsy. You want things to, uh, you want to take on more responsibilities you want to keep yourself busy and productive and so the slowdown while it's nice it's it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable it makes you feel a little bit uncertain about like you know where's my career headed is this stable enough for me to stay in and is this the only thing that I'm waiting on right now okay so there is a little bit of an antsy energy coming through on the work front I feel like some of you might be in a position where you are either training a lot of people or you're in the public limelight quite a bit. And uh, third message that I have here, it feels to me as if um, some of you are thinking about your long term career. And it seems to me like, you know, there might have been people throwing ideas out there. If it's like a boss, a supervisor, they're like, oh, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And you really want to think about like, while sometimes it is a lot easier for other people to make these decisions for us, I feel like it's really important for you to, to rather than go with the flow, to really think about, am I going to be happy here long term? you know, after two, three years, is this viable for me? Should I continue where people put me or should I, you know, seek new opportunities? So I feel like a little bit of re-examination when it comes to work contracts would be pertinent for your situation, okay? I'm also feeling as well that some of you are waiting for major breakthroughs that are happening in about two months time. So that's going to bring us into the September time frame. So it feels to me like there's going to be a lot of changes, a lot of changes for the better, because I feel like, you know, you're a really hardworking sign and you're, you're incredibly, incredibly um, dedicated and, and, you know, internally motivated to do your job well. So scrapping you, that's not going to happen in the next, uh, in your work environment. But I feel like you might bore, you might feel bored. You might feel like you need more out of life, out of work. And so you might need to reassess, you know, 
where where can I go? Are there other things out there that's more worthy of my time? Am I already you know maxed out when it comes to all the skills that I'm learning in this current work environment? And should I be shifting gears and moving somewhere else? So I feel like that's happening for you. Um, I see you giving a lot of talks. I see you in the limelight. I see you doing seminars. I do see you meeting with a lot of people and giving them mentorship or guidance. Okay, so that's for those of you working more in that capacity. And then I see you meeting clients for those working more in that uh, capacity where, you know, you're client based and you're doing things on a client base. So very quickly, the last message that I have here is um, September and October are very, very good months for you. And I feel financially things are going to be really good. Um, professionally, October looks really strong for major breakthroughs. And so they're saying, you know, um, don't fret over it. But I feel like contracts and thing negotiations, they need to be kind of um, reworked and relooked at. Okay. Um, let me just talk about the spread here. Okay. We have all the cards laid out. So let me talk about the beginnings and the end. Um, First of all, let me talk about a relationship. And this is uh, screaming out to me kind of some type of a creative endeavor or a love relationship. Um, this is your energy, Scorpio. And you show up here as somebody who is, um, you know, this is not like a foolhardy, um, infatuated, you know, um, puppy love type of an energy, okay? I feel like a lot of you are in a relationship here where somebody is really boosting your self-esteem. Somebody is very dedicated to you, is very committed to you, and is um, has been kind of like very emotionally supportive to you. So I feel for some of you, you're dealing with this person here. This is a fire sign. So a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo, sun, moon, or rising, or somebody that exhibits embodies this energy this person is very black or white they're very honest very faithful and they're very caring but they they have a detached energy okay they don't give their energy away to deadbeats they don't give their energy away to dead end relationships dead end projects dead end work they're very versatile and I feel like they're quite popular okay so it, it's somebody that either you know like um, has her own business has a lot of skills under her belt her or his belt and because the cards are gender neutral it's somebody that is um, I feel like quite intelligent okay don't take this relationship for granted in any capacity. Don't take it for granted. I feel that you need to express yourself. Like you need to, you know, show them how you feel and you need to give them a sense of stability because I feel like they're kind of darting around quite adventurous, uh, moving on to the next thing. So if you like this person and you want this person to be in your life and you want to build something, you are going to need to embody this energy where you speak from the heart tell them how you feel, allow your feelings to lead the conversation so that they know where they stand with you. Because I feel like they're looking at you and they're like, is the Scorpio committed to me? You're looking at them and you're thinking vice versa. Is this person committed to me? Am I enough? So I feel like there's an element here about, you know, am I enough for this person? And then the other person thinking the same thing you know, am I enough for the Scorpio person? So I feel that expressing yourself, speaking from the heart, allowing this situation to empower you and allow, because I feel like you're, you're dealing with somebody that is very good. Okay. And it's going to be good for you to express yourself so that they feel safe and secure in the relationship and they're willing to invest a lot more. So I feel like you've got somebody, either somebody that you're very attracted to and you're trying to build something together because I feel like news communication and things like that coming back and forth between you and the other person and I also feel feelings have been reciprocated okay and so moving forward really express how you feel because I feel like they're they're looking at other options too so if you're not making your feelings known you might lose out on a very good catch so that's the thing I'm, I'm sensing here um what I'm also feeling here, and let me talk about, you know, the, the opposite ends of the spectrum here. There was a relationship, significant relationship in your life where 
it was somewhat karmic. It was a very, very heavy emotional burden of a relationship for you. And um, at first, it felt very, you know, like idealistic. It felt very faded. It felt very karmic. It felt like no matter what, you kept running into each other. And I feel like you put too much emphasis on the fact that it's faded, it's karmic. And you might not see the reality of the situation where you're not compatible, where the other person really did a number on you. They, they might have um, prevented you from ever seeking financial stability, right? Like there was something when you're together with them, your blessings become lessened lessened as in you know it's not coming in as strongly as it's not very stable and so i feel like you you have emotionally withdrawn yourself from this situation and it took you a long time to heal it took you a long time to get over it you might have gone wild after you know getting out of this relationship like um started dating started wanting to have a very good time and, and things like that and i also feel for others of you You've left the relationship, so that's not really a problem. But there are children in the picture, so you are kind of like bound by, you know, legality. You can't really venture out of your geographical location if there are children, custody issues, custody arrangements in the picture, right? There might also be, you know, child support considerations as well. So I feel like on the one hand, this the energy for this month, there's a lot of talks of travel, of seeing new things, of expanding outside of our geographical location, of grabbing new opportunities when it comes to work, when it comes to life, when it comes to just opportunities to allow yourself to travel and to experience the new. But contractually, you're not able to do that contractually and you are a very very loyal sign so for example if you work with um you know if you work with a boss right your boss trusts you and your boss wants you to kind of like pass pass the mantle down to you and you might have like you know a verbal agreement and you stick by it and you're just like no i'm not going to go anywhere because i promised this person that i'm going to do this and so promises actually mean a lot to you and this is the month in which these promises that are made you need to re-examine whether or not they are holding you back or whether or not they are you you're making them because they prove to be stable or whether you're making them because out of that sense of obligation and whether or not these contracts these verbal agreements these promises were made I guess like um, it's not under duress because you know no one can corner you but I feel that it's becoming very restrictive it's it's kind of um, curbing your ability to move about it's curbing your ability to really take time off to travel it's really curbing your ability to find other options that might be a lot more financially a lot more like financially lucrative for you but then on the other hand I do sense that, you know, Scorpios, you have a lot of skills here. And one of the major um, assets that you bring to the table is, and this is just, you know, uh, what I'm feeling, your ability to make the other person feel very at ease, okay? And uh, if you meet new people, they talk to you, you can, you know, pinpoint exactly, okay, so here's where I feel like, you know, you're struggling and here's my proposed solution. So I feel like you're a very solution-oriented type of a sign. You don't like it when people are distressed and you would do everything in your power to make them feel a lot better. And so what I feel happening overall is that you have a lot of skills. You have social skills, people skills, problem-solving skills, critical thinking skills. And you need to really reassess whether or not, you know, these promises where you're making on the work front, on the career front, whether or not they're holding you back or whether or not they are still viable for you in this present moment. Have you maxed out all the skills and do you need something more? Do you need something a lot more exciting? Okay, so I feel like that's pretty much one of the problems we're looking at and we're going to be dealing with for the month of July. 
Um, I'm sensing for some people too, there might be a significant relationship partner. Okay. If, especially if the relationship has been very rocky, if the relationship is like, yes or no, are we getting back together or are we broken up for good? What's going to happen? I feel that the person is going to be uh, choosing to walk away or you are like, you know, growing quite impatient and you're going to be the one to make the split and physically, physically walk away. I feel like there's some changes happening in your home environment here where somebody might be moving in, somebody might be moving out. Um, it could also be work related. It could be also career related where somebody lands a job. They're thinking about traveling and they're going to be out of the picture, especially if you're living with them. If you're living with roommates, if you're living with family members, there's going to be some restructuring within the home environment. Um, because of all these changes happening to everybody around you, I feel like on a um, on an emotional level too, you're just like, wow, everybody's moving to bigger new things, you know, like when is my turn going to come? And so there's a little bit of a wanderlust, you know, type of energy coming into the picture for you. And you're thinking about, wow, my life would be very different if I lived here or, you know, if I moved here, what is my life going to look like? So I feel like a lot of hypotheticals running through your head regarding where you are right now. Yes, things are good. Things are, are safe. I feel like it's safe. But is it exciting enough? Is it stimulating enough? Are you still learning new things? Are you still finding personal enjoyment in the work that you do in the geographical location? Are there enough things that stimulate you? So I feel like on the one hand, there's a lot of stability. But on the other hand, opportunities are not coming in plentifully uh, when it comes to like, you know, meeting the right people, meeting, making the right connections, meeting the right professional contacts. Okay. I honestly would urge you if you are signing new contracts, um, just look them over, just mull them over, sleep on it, give it some time, um, chew on it. Okay. Chew on it. I feel that's going to be important for you. Um, I'm getting this message here and this is not going to apply to everybody, but I'm feeling like some of you, um, you love to travel. And, uh, I feel like, you know, overseas travel. Okay. And I, I feel like this is not, you know, a stereotypical Scorpio trait, but I feel like when you travel, you feel very invigorated. And, you know, if you travel in, in a different country where you are ethnically different from the people, you really stand out, right? You really stand out and you, you feel like, wow, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like a make believe of pretend environment, mainly because you're there as a tourist. You're not there as, you know, as a person that's living there. And so everything becomes heightened and magnified. All the emotions just feel very real. And then when you come back to, you know, wherever you, you live, it just feels like very mundane. It feels very monotonous. And so there's this hunger for new experiences. There's this push for you to kind of like live a little bit more on the edge, you know, like taking risks doing something you've never done before, reaching out to another person that you might have, you know, um, overlooked in the past and wanting to make, to reconnect with them. And I feel like if it's somebody that you've done, you, you've, you've left behind for quite some time, um, the, the, they might have already moved on. Okay. So I feel like, you know, there's a, a, an inner child coming out of you where you want to do something new. You want to do something exciting where you want to kind of like, you know, scrap the responsibilities and let me just do this, get it out of my system. That's what it feels like to me. And so they're really telling you examining, examining, you know, new things, contracts that is going to lead you to the next phase, really looking at them, looking at the fine print and looking at, you know, like, why is this burst of energy coming in? That's forcing me uh, to, to feel so strongly or to, you know, uh, gear me towards a, a specific direction. Like, why does it feel so singular? And are there other things that I can do? Do I have other options? Because I feel like you do have other options. So don't look at things too fatalistically. Okay. So I hope this is helpful for you because I feel like this is a lot, there's a lot of energies that you're dealing with, but it is work finance related. And it is also, you know, overall uh, relationship as well. 
re taking relationships to the next level, stabilizing a relationship even. So let me see what is in store here for you for your love relationship reading specifically. I feel like this is the month in which your partner is going through a lot of hardships, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of pessimism, and, um, you know, dealing with struggles, internal struggles within themselves. So in a way, you're going to have to be kind of like the cheerleader to egg them on and to motivate them and to provide kind of like uh, that emotional support for your partner. Your partner is going to go through a dark period, okay? And um, I feel like a lot of it has to do with decisions that they're dealing with internally, decisions that they're dealing with on the work front, pesty people that are um, kind of like raining on their parade. So I feel like you are going to have to be that cheerleader for your partner and to, to help them weather the storm. OK, and, you know, you are a very realistic sign. I feel like you, you do a lot of things too behind the scenes to make the situation better for other people and you don't do it with a lot of fanfare but I feel like this is the month in which you're going to have to like you know put your heart out there and just be like I know you can do it because I believe in you you know cheesy one liners um, I feel like it, it's going to do a lot to motivate your partner okay the reason why I say that is um First of all, we have here the five of wands and we also have here the eight of coins. It feels to me as if some of you are in a partnership where your partner, this card overall, it's about conflict, but uh, the way that it's coming out, it's about inner struggle. Somebody is not making traction in the world. Somebody is feeling as if the world is against them. There's so much opposition. I don't know what to do. And so they're turning to you. They might, you know, they, they come to you and they're just like, they're venting, right? And your instinct is... Here's what you should do. Your instinct is to offer a solution. Your instinct is, you know, not listening and instead offering solutions. Because I feel like this is something that you've dealt with before with this person. And so my advice here is, you know, let them vent. Let them vent. Let it all out. Likewise, if you're the person dealing with a lot of uncertainty, you also want to vent and your partner is telling you, you know, here's what you should do. And I feel like the, the best thing to do in this case is, you know, just tell them, uh, do you have 30 minutes? Because I need to vent. I've had a really bad day and I need to run some ideas off you or I just need to vent. So being very clear in your communication, okay? But also being that cheerleader so that the situation doesn't aggravate. Let the other person know. We have here the Eight of Coins. And the Eight of Coins is pretty much about working at something consistently despite the differences despite the challenges that are showing up and coming up in your relationship working at them being diligent um you know like relationships they say is a lot of work it requires equal exchange of energy okay in order for things to work out the way that you want so i feel like some of you in relationships you're going to be dealing with that um a very pessimistic type of partner and they're not usually like this it's just this month, the energy is very unsettling for them, and you're going to have to play cheerleader. Let me talk about the past. We have here the star, and we have as well the two of swords. So Scorpios, I feel like some of you were dealing with this person. The star is a very um, inspiring person. Very, very inspiring. It might or might not be an, an air sign like an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. But I feel this is a person that has very good moral you know, values. This is a person that cares about the world. This is a person that inspires you, that always is willing to offer a helping hand. This is a really good person. They might also do something related to healing. And I'm feeling they're very, very in tune with you psychically. You might have a lot of struggles in the relationship, but, you know, you see the best in them. They see the best in you. And there's a lot of faith and a lot of um, 
I want to say like, um, this is a, it, it just seems to me, it screams out like, this is a really good person. And when the person came into the picture, you know all of that. You know that they're a really good person, right? You know that they're very inspiring. They have a good heart. And I feel like a big part of you just didn't know what to do with it. And I feel like this person kind of scares you a little bit, mainly because they know too much, okay? They're very highly intuitive. They know too much. They they know way too much about your motives. They might ask a lot of questions as well. And I feel like you didn't know how to handle that relationship because it was too scary. And I feel as well, the relationship itself might have been so dependent on them making a decision. And so you went along with it. You know, they, they might be the one that is more type A. So they make all the executive decisions. They're the one that is moving the relationship along. And I feel like over time, it, it became very tiring when people fall into, you know, certain pre prescribed roles and the relationship stopped moving forward. So I feel like some of you have left this person behind and they are kind of like setting the barometer for you as to here's what I want to find next. I want to find somebody exactly like them because they were really good. And I, I feel like some of you are trying to do that. Okay. So moving forward, um, I feel like you've got a, a really good partner for some of you. Others, if you have left this person behind, you're trying to recreate that feeling. You're trying to cre recreate that partner. You're trying to manifest that type of a partner that will, you know, that is insp inspiring, inspirational, that is, has a really good heart. You're trying to find somebody like it. And um, I'm sensing overall, you are going to be able to meet the right one. And if you have this person in your life already, you, this is kind of like a soulmate connection. This is somebody that is kindred to you. Okay. So we have here the wheel of fortune, which basically means that feelings are being reciprocated. Things go both ways. And even if you go through, you know, the ups and downs of life, you're going to be ending up together. You're going to find yourself very much reconciling with them, overcoming your differences and being able to find somebody. And especially if you left them behind, you're going to be able to find somebody that is just like that, that is very responsive to your needs, that takes care of you, that knows how to, that knows you kind of like inside and out. It makes you uncomfortable. It, it really does. But I feel like a lot of you have a do-over for this month, okay? So take care of your relationships and really treasure and value the people that really take the time to spend with you, to be with you. I feel that you're coming into a new found sense of appreciation. It's like making you so happy that, you know, you, you over you're overwhelmed with tears. I'm seeing like this little tear coming out of her eye. And it, it just makes me feel like you're going to be, um, you're going to feel very good and supported. And, you know, you're going to feel like my partner is the one I'm going to wait for them. So I feel like there is um, coming back together. There is a do over. There's a second chance here. And there's a time for you to do something the right way. Okay. So that's coming through. Crowning this reading, this is something you're thinking about. We have here the Justice card, and we have here the Three of Swords. So simply, it could be a separation that has happened between you and a partner. And uh, it, it signals divorce. It signals, you know, with the Justice card. The Justice card usually means contracts, um, agreement, breaking down contracts, reneging on contracts, reneging on responsibilities. But overall, this is just separation as a result of a um, breaking off a marriage contract, breaking off an engagement, breaking off something. So I feel that this is something that has happened between um, for for you, where you are broken up, newly broken up, and you know for the past three months things have been very tenuous. So we're moving into July, and uh, I feel like from the April time frame, April, uh, May, June. Things were very tenuous. Are we or are we not breaking up? And if that's something that's been straggling on since April, I feel that you're going to finalize some decisions and you're going to leave a partner, okay? Which brings me to the next point. And this is something that I don't really want to see, but we have here the Ten of Swords. So I feel like relationships coming to an end 
you are learning from it. And if you are especially involved with a fire sign, a Leo specifically, um, I feel like a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo, they're trying to find themselves. They're trying to go on a journey so that they can, you know, figure themselves out. And I feel that it's going to create a little bit of a separation between the two of you. And there's going to be discussions, you know, especially if you're married to them. There's going to be discussions like, what do we do now? Where do we go from here? And as well, how do we divide the assets between the two of you, uh, the, the two people? So I'm sensing that for for relationship, it seems very singular relationships that have been since April, kind of like on the verge of tearing apart or breaking down, it is going to come to an end. And I feel that you are trying to, I would advise you heavily for this month. Um, if you have a relationship partner that you care about, don't take them for granted. Okay. Because I feel like they're dealing with their own internal issues and the energy is volatile from their end. So like when they sense that there is a lack of support from your end in any way, they might not feel safe and secure in that relationship and they might just do a 180. Okay. Especially if you're dealing with an air sign and in particular an Aquarius. Um, so air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. I feel like there is a lot of emotional support that they need and you need to be emotionally available and, and, and emotionally in tune to that. And so I feel that the relationship people, it's like either breaking up, taking the relationship to the next level. I do see a little bit of disputes here and there. Handle the energy well, okay? So that means listen while somebody vents. That means asking follow-up questions so that they know that you're listening, okay? Um, singles people, I do feel great time for you to date, okay? Meeting somebody that's very similar to you, meeting somebody that, for example, it's it, they're saying like peas in a pod. So I, I got the same energy, I believe, for, I believe it was for the Virgo reading. So they're saying meeting somebody that can make you feel really good, that makes you feel normal. You know, like if you've been feeling like, is there something wrong with me? You're going to meet somebody that is just going to be like, no, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just there's everything wrong with everybody else. So you're meeting somebody that, that will re really reinforce your values, really reinforce uh, what you're looking for. OK, and I feel especially if you are like divorced or, you know, newly single, you have opportunities here. And I feel like it might also be a fire sign, new, brand new. OK. So we have fire signs and air signs, actually. So Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, and then uh, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra coming into the future. You're going to have success. You're going to be able to move on. You're going to have somebody that really restores you and really appreciates all the challenges you've been through in your life. And they want to take care of you. Like they want to make you um, feel better. Okay. They want to like, they, they, they see the, the turbulence that has been in your past and they're just like, wow, you're really strong. And they want to take care of you. Okay. So I wish you the best. Take care, Scorpios. I'll be back for the mid-month reading.